In the heart of Africa, beneath the surface of international business dealings, a clandestine saga unfolds, a narrative that hints at the secretive maneuvers of Western multinational companies in the Congo. Unbeknownst to many, these renowned corporations have allegedly embarked on covert missions, veiled in secrecy and shrouded by the adept ability of Western enterprises to conceal their tracks. Despite the difficulty in unearthing their illicit activities, reports have emerged, daring to expose the unlawful exploits of these companies on the African continent. This revelation, however, comes with a perplexing twist. The media, typically a sentinel of truth, appears deaf and blind to these unfolding events. Speculations arise that a sinister force, in the form of financial incentives, has compelled the media's silence, suppressing any coverage that may shed light on the questionable actions of these multinational giants. What do these reports reveal about the concealed activities of Western multinational companies in Africa? The enduring legacy of Western exploitation in Africa persists, casting a long and ominous shadow over the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC. In a world where human rights are championed and Western nations frequently vocalize their commitment to these principles, it remains a paradox that exploitation continues unabated, particularly in the resource-rich lands of the Congo. The historical context of the DRC unveils a tumultuous narrative marred by the shackles of colonialism and haunted by the echoes of slavery. Belgium's King Leopold II, in the late 19th century, subjected the Congolese people to unimaginable horrors during his brutal colonization, leaving scars that persist to this day. The exploitation endured by the DRC is not merely a relic of the past, rather, it is a contemporary saga dominated by Western multinational corporations driven by an insatiable demand for the nation's abundant mineral wealth. The relentless pursuit of minerals like coltan, cobalt, and gold, vital components in modern technologies, exposes the darker underbelly of these corporations' actions. Exploiting legal loopholes and engaging in unethical practices, they perpetuate a cycle of poverty and vulnerability, often resorting to child labor and subjecting workers to hazardous conditions. However, the impact of this exploitation extends beyond the plundering of resources. It exacts a severe human toll on the people of the DRC. From pervasive poverty to widespread displacement and economic downturns, the consequences paint a grim picture, especially for women and children. Rural communities bear the brunt of this exploitation, lacking access to basic resources and facing limited opportunities for sustainable livelihoods. The economic gains from mineral extraction bypass the majority of the population, leaving them mired in poverty. Displacement, a poignant consequence of exploitation, disrupts lives, tearing apart the social fabric and leaving communities in overcrowded and inadequate conditions. The economic downturns driven by multinational corporations prioritizing profit over sustainable development deepen the challenges faced by citizens, leading to job losses and decreased opportunities for growth. To break the chains of exploitation ensnaring the Democratic Republic of Congo, a concerted effort from international organizations, governments, and civil society is imperative. The root causes of poverty, displacement, and economic downturns must be addressed through initiatives that prioritize sustainable development, equitable resource distribution, and the protection of vulnerable populations. Only through such collaborative endeavors can a future be fostered where the well-being of the Congolese people is paramount. Returning to the economic devastation afflicting the DRC, one cannot ignore the profound impact of Western influence on its economic dilemma. Once considered a beacon of industrialization in Africa, the nation now grapples with the aftermath of past concessions and exploitation, creating a shadow over its economic development. Prolonged conflicts, fueled by competition over valuable resources, have ravaged the nation, disrupting economic activities and deterring industrial growth. Historically recognized as Africa's second most industrialized country, the DRC now faces a decline in industrialization. 
The exploitation of concessions and the disruptive impact of conflicts have led to the neglect of crucial infrastructure, resulting in a reduction in industrial output. This decline not only hampers economic growth, but also limits job opportunities, perpetuating the cycle of economic stagnation and underdevelopment. In the heart of the DRC lies the economic lifeblood of the nation, gold, diamonds, cobalt, and copper. However, the connection between the exploitation of these resources and the persistent conflicts plaguing the country is undeniable. Instead of contributing to economic growth, these resources have become double-edged swords, fueling and sustaining conflicts rather than fostering development. The illicit trade of minerals, driven by unscrupulous practices from both local and international actors, plays a pivotal role in intensifying conflict. Armed groups, often with external support, exploit resource-rich regions, engaging in illegal mining and trading to fund their operations. This connection between exploitation and conflict transforms valuable resources into catalysts for unrest and instability. The complex and contentious relationship between the West and conflicts in the DRC is evident in historical and contemporary evidence. External forces, including Western interests, have played a role in driving and perpetuating conflicts to control valuable resources. Multinational corporations, geopolitical interests, and exploitative trade practices contribute to a cycle where the DRC struggles to break free from the chains of conflict and instability. The lure of financial gains through resource exploitation perpetuates a cycle of exploitation, amplifying the militarization of resource-rich regions. Rebel groups operating in these areas directly engage in or benefit from illegal mining and trade, using the revenue generated to sustain armed conflicts. This militarization and violence pose a grave threat to civilian populations, leaving communities at the mercy of armed groups and resulting in violence, displacement, and human rights abuses. Moreover, the involvement of foreign powers and multinational corporations in the exploitation of the Congo's resources has deepened internal conflicts and exacerbated political instability. Wars driven by the pursuit of political dominance and control over mineral wealth have resulted in a staggering death toll exceeding 5.5 million. The link between political dominance and control over mineral wealth has been a recurring theme, hindering the establishment of a stable government capable of addressing the population's needs. The West's consistent advocacy for human rights stands in stark contrast to its involvement in the Congo. The exploitation of natural resources has often gone hand in hand with human rights violations, creating a path of suffering for many in the country. From colonial rule to the present day, the misuse of Congo's resources has led to actions violating international humanitarian laws designed to protect people. The consequences of this exploitation and human rights violations are long-lasting, leaving a trail of suffering and despair in the DRC. Several major multinational corporations, including Barclays Bank, De Beers, and Anglo-American, have faced accusations of contributing to the ongoing instability in the DRC. Despite some defending these corporations for boosting the economy and creating jobs, concerns persist about their adverse effects on the country's stability and human rights situation. These corporations have been accused of fueling conflicts, making it challenging for the DRC to achieve a stable and peaceful environment. The extraction and utilization of natural resources by these corporations often leads to environmental degradation and social upheaval, causing harm to local communities. Striking a balance between economic benefits and addressing negative consequences for stability and human rights is crucial. Calls for transparency and accountability from multinational corporations operating in the DRC are growing, emphasizing the need for responsible business practices aligned with ethical standards and international laws. International collaboration between governments, non-governmental organizations, and corporations is essential to establishing guidelines that protect the well-being of Congolese citizens. 
The question arises, is the West's action in Congo a human rights violation? The evidence suggests a significant impact on human rights, with exploitation, violence, and environmental degradation affecting the lives of the Congolese people. Thank you for joining us on Africa Info Hub. Kindly stay informed, share your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe for more nuanced perspectives on Africa's geopolitical landscape.